So folks, my goodness, he did it again. Old Donnie did it again. And while what we saw was a vile display and he should not be given the platforms he's given, when he gets those platforms, the silver lining is that he incriminates himself further. And in his latest interview, brand new clips posted just seconds and minutes ago, he not only continued to spread his dangerous lies, yes, but he incriminated himself over and over and over again, bringing a real sense that this man is going to continue to be the number one force sending himself to prison. Hit the like and subscribe button because I have some exclusive up to the second clips to bring you because we saw some teasers of this interview where he was going to do this big one-on-one -on -one interview with mainstream media but today the final product was released and i have new info that hadn't been shared yet and in each and every one of these he not only humiliates himself and spreads his lies of course but he goes out there and he incriminates himself first by basically saying he doesn't want to actually share what he was doing I also talked to former President Trump about his actions on January 6th and why he never sent help when the Capitol was under attack. In our conversation, he directly contradicted the sworn testimony of one of his aides who testified to the January 6th committee that the former president was so determined to go to the Capitol himself after his rally that he grabbed a Secret Service agent inside the president's limo. Take a listen. I wanted to go down peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol, Secret Service, who I have great respect for, said, sir, it's better if you don't do that. It could be unsafe because they didn't they did because of riots it because, you know, it takes one guy with with bad intentions. OK, so I didn't have a dispute with them. You know, you had that one person said I grabbed the man around the neck. Actually, I wish I was so strong to be able to do that. These are all tough guys, smart guys. You dispute guys. that account. Dispute it. Who wouldn't dispute it? She's. The craziest account I've ever heard. You mean that I was in the Beast, and she said I was in the Beast, and the Secret Service didn't win. So I took a guy who was like a black belt in karate and grabbed his neck and tried to choke him. What happened? How ridiculous. Just so you understand, this, and I have great respect for Secret Service, by the way. They're fantastic. The Secret Service said, sir, it would be better if you didn't. I said, I'd love to do it. They said it would be better until we went back to the White House. Just so you understand. I spoke, I made a very nice speech. Tell me how you watched this all unfold. Were you in the dining room watching TV? I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell people later at an appropriate time. Just so you understand, however. What did you do when the Capitol was under attack, though? Let me Mr. just tell you. In the moment that the Capitol was Did you was see the attack. statements I made in the Oval Office and just outside of the Oval Office? Absolutely. Go I was home. there that day. Our police are great. We love our police. We love everybody. Go home. That was, this was that a was beautiful That was statement. at 4 well, o'clock in the afternoon. Like, that's ridiculous. That's a massive excuse. He's like, well, I don't want to tell you. I'm not going to tell you in a very rude way, snapping at the, at the, at the, at the interview, uh, interviewer. As a guy, I don't want to tell you. And he kind of says, oh, I'll, I'll say it on the stand. But like, if Donald Trump is really confident in his narrative, he'll say what he did. And the reason he won't say it is because we know he's bluffing about actually testifying. And he doesn't want to say what he did during those 186 odd minutes. Because what we know he was doing was at best, nothing. And at worst, getting his jollies off from the violence. There are multiple reports of people who worked for Donald Trump at the time. We saw this in the J6 hearings, but we also saw it through media reports and people just speaking to journalists that Donald Trump on that day wanted to go to the Capitol, decided not to after it was deemed unsafe and he's a coward and all of that, goes back to the White House and then sits down in like the dining room adjacent to the Oval Office kind of area, like in his personal dining room and rewinds and watches and rewinds and watches the carnage because he loved what he was seeing. So there's no excuse. It wasn't like he was in a top secret meeting with a foreign leader and wasn't getting up to the second information and then came out, realized what happened and then put a stop to it. No, in reality, he was getting off on it. And I know it sounds gross, but that's really what was happening. And here he gets called out trying to blame it on everybody but himself. But this is also incriminating. For the I, I don't know. Three hours the, after the but attack there were tweets started. were put out before that. I want to know who you called By the way, on that day. Nancy Pelosi. I, I, I don't have. I, why would day. I tell you that? Listen, Nancy don't Pelosi. Don't want to talk about that.
was in charge of security. She turned down 10,000 soldiers. If she didn't turn down the soldiers, you wouldn't have had January 6th. Did you call military or law enforcement? What? Did you call military or law enforcement at the moment the Capitol was under attack? I'm not going to tell you anything. I told, okay. I, let me put it this way. I behaved so well. I did such a good job. Nancy Pelosi turned down 10,000 soldiers. If she didn't do that. But and now Nancy I understand, Pelosi doesn't have the I understand that, that you the police have testified against in chief, though. Listen to me, Kristen. Listen to me. I understand that the police testified against her, the chief very strongly against mm -hmm. her. Capitol Police, great people. They testified against her. And they burned all the evidence, okay? They burned all the evidence. Mr. They President, destroyed all the evidence about Nancy Pelosi. What do you say to people who wonder why you, you as Commander-in-Chief, you have authorities that Nancy Pelosi doesn't have as Commander-in-Chief. No, no, she has authority over why the Why didn't Capitol. you send help in that moment, though? Uh, frankly, just so you understand, I assume that she took care of it. She turned down... So when you realized that, that the National Guard wasn't coming? Well, when, you, didn't, you don't realize anything until quite a while. National Guard not coming. I yes, I asked it to be there three days in advance, and she turned it down. She says that that request was never officially made. Oh, just stop so it. you know. L let, let me just tell you. Let me ask you the about mayor pardons, of D let Mr. Me tell President. You. The mayor of D.C. gave us a letter saying that she turns it down. Okay, we have it. Nancy Pelosi also was asked, and she turned it down. The police commission. I'm talking about Capitol the day police, of Wait a minute. Yeah. Capitol Police said that he wanted it, and Nancy Pelosi wouldn't accept it. She's responsible for January Let's, 6th. Mr. President. Nancy Pelosi is responsible. Mr. And President, the you're the president, though. You have, to interview you have authorities her. that no one else has as the commander-in-chief. Do you think you showed leadership on that? Day? Yes, absolutely, I did. Okay. When he does this, when he tries to blame other people, it really puts the target back on himself. He's trying to blame Pelosi on the one hand and saying that he called in all the necessary, you know, backup forces to try and control the situation. And that's not true. It really isn't. There was a sense on that day that they were abandoned. And we know that. And we know that. And look, I'm not going to praise Mike Pence, the, the awful monster that he is 99% of the time. But he was the one that ultimately made a lot of those decisions on that day from like the executive branch because Trump uh, w was derelict in his duty. He was AWOL on that day at best, again, at best. Right. But we also know other moments where he was on a phone call with GOP leaders as they were barricaded away, about to be killed by Trump supporters. And he said they were t they were telling Trump. You got to call off your dogs. And he said to them, well, you know, maybe they got a point. Maybe they have a right and a reason and a rationale to be as angry and violent as they are. Maybe they just care about this country more than the Republicans in the, in the, in the Congress that aren't doing enough to keep me in power. All of this serves to remind people of that. And this is also crazy where he continues this again. He can't control himself, guys where he openly admits it was all his doing. The most senior lawyers in your own administration and on your campaign told you that after you'd lost more than 60 legal challenges, that it was over. Why did you ignore them and decide to listen to a new outside group? Because of I didn't respect them. Uh, you'd hire lawyers. Them. Sure, but that doesn't mean, you know, you hire them, you never met these people, you get a recommendation, they turn out to be rhinos or they turn out to be not so good. In many cases, I didn't respect them. But I did respect others. I respected many others I, that, that said the election was rigged. You called some of your outside lawyers. You said they had crazy theories. Why were you listening to them? Were you listening to them because they were telling you what you wanted to hear? You know who I listened to myself? I saw what happened. I watched that election and I thought the election was over at 10 o'clock in the evening. You were listening to your instincts. Uh, my instincts are a big part of it. That's been the thing that's gotten me to where I am, my instincts. But I also listen to people. There are many lawyers. I could give you many books. Uh, I, there are books that are written on how the election was rigged. There are numerous books that were written on how the election was Just rigged. Just to be clear, were you listening to your lawyer's advice or were you listening to your own instincts? I was listening to different people. And when I added it all up, the election was rigged. There are books were you that calling are written. the shots, though? In fact, Molly Hemingway wrote a great book. Oh, were you called calling rigged. the shots, ultimately? Excuse me. Molly Hemingway, mm -hmm. who's highly respected and great, she wrote a, a book, a, a best-selling book called Rigged. Were you calling the shots, though, Mr. President, ultimately? Uh, as to whether or not I believed it was rigged? Oh, sure. I, okay. I, it was my decision. But I listened to some people. Some people said that. Um, 
like guys like Bill Barr, he was a stiff, but he wasn't there at the time. But he, he didn't do his job because he was afraid. You know what he was afraid of? He was afraid of being impeached. He was petrified to be impeached. And he's, how do you not get impeached? Don't do anything. Like, I don't even know if that's true. Because here's the thing, like Trump's not a very bright guy. And there are so many schemes happening everywhere. It's conceivable that he was not the point man on every single scheme. In fact, there may be some schemes where Trump didn't play very much of a direct role at all. Doesn't mean he's not guilty. This is why Rico exists, for example, because even if you don't have a direct hand in every part of the crime, you could still be part of the organized criminal aspect and punished as a result. This is how they took down the mafia. This is how they're going to take down Trump and his cronies. But, you know, Donald Trump here out of ego is basically saying, yeah, I, I, it was all me. I'm the genius behind my scheme. Uh, they did take it from me and, and I know that and that that's what happened. And all of this was my decision. And it's like, man, if you weren't hung already, you just took the string, made the rope, hung the rope on the tree, ready for yourself. It's, it's, it's even for Trump. It's one of the most shocking admissions because yes, I know he's got an ego and his ego is like, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the God, I'm the kingpin, I'm the champion, I'm the big dog, whatever, right? I'm the top guy, the, the big cheese. And as a result, everything goes through me. But he also usually is even a little bit smart enough to, to blame others. Like even recently, he blamed one of his sons for issues at the corporation. He's blamed lawyers before. He's blamed random staffers. Now he can't even do that. It's wild stuff. It's absolutely wild what we're seeing from Donald Trump. This is a man that has fundamentally incriminated himself more than ever before. Again, there's a real debate about this interview. A lot of people are saying it shouldn't have been done. They did quote unquote fact checking, but it was done afterwards, mostly in writing on the website. And there needed to be more, and there were some, but there needed to be much more real time intervention to combat Trump's lies if you're going to air this interview at all. But despite that, if there's any value in this, it's that he just gave evidence in every single one of his ongoing criminal cases.